Cousins is going to the Atlanta Falcons. He is leaving Minnesota. He is going to Atlanta. The Atlanta Falcons have landed Kirk Cousins, and the Minnesota Vikings now need one, but the biggest domino in free agency has now hit. $100 million guaranteed for Kirk Cousins. It sounds like a lot, but the reality is, for that team, I think it made all the sense in the world. I think they're much closer than people are saying. I think they were badly coached, and they were terribly quarterbacked last year. And if they have better coaching with average to slightly above average quarterback play, I think they are a legitimate Super Bowl contender in the NFC. That's right, I said it. When the offseason officially started and the Atlanta Falcons were out trying to find a new coach, I knew right from the jump that Raheem Morris was the guy they needed and the guy they actually ended up getting, and it is massive, right? A guy that people want to play for, a guy who guys will run through a wall for. Not only that, but a guy who knows how to lead a group of men in the right direction. And the Atlanta Falcons team, quite frankly, was one of the best worst teams in the NFL last season. Now, what I mean by that was... They were really good outside of the offense, outside of the quarterback and maybe the coaching of last season. This is a playoff football team. And the reason I know that is because their defense was so good, even though their offense couldn't stay on the field longer than two minutes, right? And that is huge in the NFL, right? If your offense puts together longer drives and sustain longer types of drives offensively, it gives more time for your defense to not only rest, but prepare for the next drive of defense. But with that being said, they were terrible. They could not stay in the field. They could not stop turning the ball over. This team was terrible, not only coaching wise, but Desmond Ritter, I'm sorry, he was just not the guy for them. And I'm not saying he can't be the future quarterback, but he's just not ready yet, right? But with that being said, Raheem Morris in the front office just did an amazing job building this team and making sure they're ready for next season. In this video, we're going to break down every move that they've made, and we're going to break down why the Atlanta Falcons, in my opinion, should be favorites to come out of that division next season. Now, let's jump right into the video. This just makes perfect sense. From a football perspective, uh, it's very easy to imagine what this Falcons offense will look like because I suspect there will be a lot of shared DNA with what we saw Kirk Cousins do in Minnesota. Their new offensive coordinator, Zach Robinson, comes from the Sean McVay tree where, of course, Kevin O'Connell did as well. Now, the first thing we need to talk about, obviously, is the quarterback situation. Kirk Cousins is on his way to the Atlanta Falcons, and this is a massive fit. Not only are you getting a leader of men, but also a guy who knows how to win football games and has been a guy who has been one of the most efficient comeback players in the NFL in terms of when he's down in games this dude knows how to turn up he knows how to flip a switch and if he can regulate that to do it every single game every single play he will become one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL now we're going to break down why I think this is a good fit as well as why you shouldn't panic because he's coming off an injury don't overestimate what or underestimate I should say what Kirk Cousins can do this dude is a dog he's a fighter and nobody notices yet but they will this season now here we go the first thing I want to show you guys is this number right here as well as a couple of others so they were ranking number 26 in points per game number 30 in red zone scoring which is touchdowns right and then also 26 in touchdowns per game the offense was horrible running game they weren't bad you have B. John Robinson right but also look at these numbers 28 in completion percentage, uh, 22 in pass yards per game, 28 in interception percentage, and 21 in QB sack percentage. The team offensively was absolutely terrible, and they needed to make some, tor uh, some sort of difference, right? Now, when you look at the depth chart, adding Kirk Cousins to this team changes everything. Kirk Cousins is a guy who was on pace to absolutely go crazy last season before getting injured. Playing eight games, had 18 touchdowns to just five interceptions. Was on pace for a 36 and 10 type of year, which would have been probably his career best in a long time, right? I mean, if you look at his numbers, 35 and 13, right? 36 and 10 would be better than that. That would have been a career high in touchdowns. Um, he was on pace to absolutely demolish a, uh, a completion percentage. This dude was on fire, okay? That's the point I'm trying to make. Over his career, over 3,900 yards, 270 touchdowns to 110 interceptions. Yeah, he might not be the best quarterback in the world in terms of, you know, keeping, um, you know, the football nice and conservatively. However, he's a guy that will change all of these numbers. They'll go from being one of the worst offenses to one of the best in a very short period of time. Like, it, it, 
watch. I guarantee you, you guys are going to slowly start to fall in love with how this dude plays football. Guys, real quickly, before we deep dive into Darnell Mooney and, you know, the addition of Rondell Moore, do me a big favor, guys. Hit the like button just so we can get this video out to more Falcons fans around the world. But also, subscribe to the channel if you're new. It is free. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. And man, Rondell Moore, Darnell Mooney, these are going to be big additions here for the Falcons. Guys, Falcons are coming up. We're going to talk about it all in a second. Make sure you guys... Do me a favor, if you guys want to see more Falcons videos, comment down below number one. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. Now, just because you find your franchise quarterback and pay him a lot of money doesn't mean that your team is built and set up for greatness, right? Also, they need to go and make some adjustments to the receiving room, right? You have Drake London, you had Kyle Pitts, you have B. John Robinson, which is a very good trio. But other than that... You have basically nothing to throw to if you're the quarterback to this team outside of those three guys. And that's where Raheem Morris in the front office sat down and said, we need some playmakers, right? Not only do we need some playmakers, but we need some young, hungry dogs. And that's exactly what they went out and got. And the first guy they actually got was this man right here, Darnell Mooney. The man has been so underrated in his career. And no, I don't want to throw a dig at Justin Fields, but there was a lot of times in this man's career where he was overthrown. This man could have easily had like two 1,000-yard seasons back-to-back. -back. However, the quarterback play just wasn't up to par. But this man, do not get it twisted. Darnell Mooney is a baller. He's fast. He's speedy. He knows how to get beyond the defense and adds a tremendous one-two punch with him and Drake London. And then you talk about, you know, Kyle Pitts up the seam. You talk about B. John Robinson coming out the backfield. Now you go from being, you know, maybe a one-dimensional team to now you have so many different options because not only do you add a guy like Darnell Mooney, who we're going to look at his stats in a second, but they also add another wide receiver in Rondell Moore. Let's talk about why both these guys are excellent fits for Kirk Cousins in this offense. Okay, so the first thing you notice here when we look at this depth chart is just take out Darnell Mooney and take out Rondell Moore. They were right with Drake London, Josh Ali, Cordero Hodge. They had nothing. They had literally nothing. Maybe you think one of these guys could be someone down the line, but they're not ready yet to compete for a championship. And that is just straight facts, right? Darnell Mooney is a guy, when you look at his stats, right? 2021. 81 catches over a thousand yards four touchdowns right he's not a big touchdown guy right he's a uh, 511 26 years old out of two lane but what he is is a guy that can get down the field and create plays once he has the ball in his hands and that is exactly what he is going to bring to atlanta a guy you can you know throw a quick slant to and boom he'll take it to the house a guy you could run on drag route and boom he'll take it to the house right um, quick screens. I think they'll use Darnell Mooney so much more, and I think he'll be highly effective here in Atlanta, right? Now, another thing to look at here, 12.2 yards per reception. Let's go back to this. So, they were averaging 6.6 .6 yards per pass. That is not great at all. Darnell Mooney's going to come in right away and double that, right, in terms of what he's going to do. Yes, he's coming off a really tough season, but that's why you were able to get him uh, for, quite frankly, pretty cheap, right? I love this deal, but they also brought in Rondell Moore as well. Let's talk a little bit about him. Now, okay, Rondell Moore is a little bit different in terms of his play style. He is a gadget guy. He is a guy you can line up in the backfield in that Debo Samuel type of role where he plays right next to the quarterback. You can hand it off to him. Yeah, you can give him a little quick screen out the backfield. But now you get a little bit more versatile, right? And you add him right next to a B's on Robinson. You can have him play in the slot. Now, the thing about him is he is 5'7", 23 years old, a former second round pick from Arizona, right? Has not been amazing. However, what I do love is sometimes in the NFL, all you need is a little kickstart, right? And what I mean by that is sometimes you'll see a guy, um, you know, get drafted to a team, not play so well, and then boom, right? Goes to a new team, change of scenery, and just like that, he is who he thought he was, right? Over his career so far, 135 catches, just over 1,200 yards, and three touchdowns. So obviously not what we expected him to be, coming out as a second round draft pick out of what was it Purdue yeah Purdue so but another thing I like about him is that versatility right last season he had 28 carries for 178 yards and a touchdown on the ground as well averaging 6.4 yards per attempt which is really 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 good right last season Atlanta was a really good run, run offense and they were ranking 19th in yards per rush at 4.1 so 
right away you look at Ronde or Rondell Moore and say, okay, that is an upgrade, right? You're not going to give him the ball 50 times a year, but if you give it to him 20 to 30 times in a season and he's averaging 6.4 yards per attempt, that is really, really good. He also doesn't have too much of a fumbling problem. He's fumbled it twice in three seasons. Not too bad, but a guy that you can have faith in to make plays after the catch. And that's really what they brought him here or to Arizona to do. Didn't do it there, but I guarantee you with Kirk Cousins, he will find this guy open. And I, I think, I am hoping, Rondell Moore starts to see a little bit of a breakout here next season with this Atlanta Falcons team that quite frankly needed help in every aspect passing the ball wise and now you look at their team right you have Drake London you have Darno Moon you have Rondell Moore and then they bring in Ray Ray McLeod who has been to the Super Bowl the past couple of seasons or been close to the Super Bowl right um and he's here he's gonna bring some veteran leadership and extremely good return man as well add some you know special teams here um with Avery Williams who they like but man, the number one thing I really want to talk about here, they do add a tight end, Charlie Warner as well from San Fran. Again, brings that championship experience, been, been to the Super Bowl, uh, brings that winning mindset here. Uh, but the one thing a lot of people are not really talking about or are talking about, right, is the fact that the Falcons didn't do much defensively. Now, the one thing I'll say about that is they didn't need to. Last offseason, they did one a hell of a job bringing in some new talent with David on Yamada. You had Jesse Bates, right? I mean, they added so much talent from last offseason to the defense that they were just in also Calais Campbell. However, Clayus Campbell is a free agent. I think he might be contemplating retirement. However, I feel like he might come back just for one more opportunity to take it all the way. Now, this team, when we look at the depth chart in a second, has so much depth. They have so many young guys that they actually like. And you can tell right away, Raheem Morris is a guy who's like, you know what, I want to roll with these guys because if we want a future, if we want to be dominant for a long period of time in instead of just one season, two seasons, we have to develop these young guys. And I think he wants to do that, right? Let's look at the depth chart really quickly. So defensively, what we notice right away is there is a lot of guys they love, right? Zach Harrison is a third round pick from last season. They think he could be a day one starter. However, still remember, Clayus Campbell may or may not be back. So Clayus Campbell could be the starter, giving one more year for Zach Harrison to really start to develop. They also really, really like this man right here, Clark Phillips. This dude was a boss, okay? This dude was changing the game last season, and I think he's really going to break out again this season or 2024 right then you have demarco Helms. now i'm not completely confident in demarco Helms. i don't think he might be ready yet obviously looks a little bit better than richie grant but i also i think richie grant's uh, you know a, a decent piece as well that you can continue to develop however doesn't have that much time left you also have jesse bates aj terrell mike hughes who they like i think this defense is really set up for greatness troy anderson the former second round pick nothing but speed on him he's he's a good player to have and then you got, uh, you know, Kay Ellis from the Saints last year, Lorenzo Carter. Now, there are areas to improve. I, I think bringing in another inside linebacker, another cornerback could definitely help this team improve and be more, uh, you know, have more depth going forward. But when you look at their defense from last season, guys, look at this. They rank number nine in completion percentage allowed, number um, nine in yards allowed per pass, number eight in pass yards a lot per game they were really good they didn't force too many turnovers in, in terms of interceptions but they were relatively good and then number nine in yards a lot per rush right and then you look at things like this right 19 in yards a lot per game in terms of the rush right but think about it guys think about it their offense last year just handed other op opponents the football right back they just gave them the ball they just said here we'll, we'll run three plays then you can have it back, tiring out the defense, making sure they're not, you know, well rested. This offense last season demoralized their own defense. Guys, I don't think you understand that. The defense had to play so much, okay? Right? And they were just allowing teams to run the football because they were down by 20 at halftime. And that's why you see uh, 27 in rush attempts per game, 19 in rush yards per game, because teams are just rushing the ball. But when you actually deep look into the stats, number nine in yards a lot per rush, number seven in rushing touchdowns a lot per game, this team was really, really good against the run, and they were really, really good against the pass. They need to get more quarterback pressure, but I think they can do that. Zach Harrison, the guy, I think could take a major jump. 
Now, with that being said, I still think there is a lot of work to do with this team. Obviously, Raheem Morris got to coach them up, make sure they're ready for next season. But at the end of the day, I'm excited. I think the Falcons took a big jump this offseason by just, quite frankly, getting a new quarterback, hiring a new head coach, bringing in some wide receiver talent. This team is ready to go, and they should be one of the best teams in this division. When you look at the numbers, when you break down what they did on defense last season, when you talk about adding a very good quarterback, he is coming off an injury. Hopefully, he is up to par, and if he is, this team just got a Pro Bowl quarterback with some really good weapons. Bijan, Pitts, London, Mooney, Rondell Moore. They did an unbelievable job this offseason. And uh, there is work to do. They got to bring in some more depth defensively. They got to bring in some more depth um, on the offensive side of the ball as well. But with that being said, we still have the NFL Draft. This team is getting better. If you guys want me to continue to break down Falcons videos, comment down below the number one. And also subscribe, hit the like button, join the family. It is free to subscribe. And we will be here all year long. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.